This video was brought to you by Nebula. Let's be honest, the Barbie movie has blown all expectations out of the water. Who would have thought that a PG-13 movie about a toy doll would pull a billion dollars at the box office? Now, the movie's success is down to a lot of things, from a stellar cast to its strong message. But ultimately, this Barbie thinks that the real reason that Barbie has been such a success is because of its marketing. So let's dive into Barbie's seemingly endless marketing campaign and budget, and explain how marketing really blew up this movie. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. <laughs> Come on, Barbie, let's go party. Stupid, so stupid. To fully understand the immense amount of marketing effort that went into this movie, we need to first take a look at some marketing theory. And I swear, we'll be back to the fun Barbie stuff soon. And I mean, I can make the chart pink if that makes the theory any more fun. Hi. So cool. Anyway, media spend is regularly grouped into three buckets, paid, earned, and owned media. Paid media is the easiest to understand. It's any kind of advertising where the company is paying for you to view, engage, or convert. Traditionally, this means things like TV ads, print advertising, and out of home. But today, it very often means digital media spend. Things like programmatic display ads, search ads, or even mid-roll ads on platforms like YouTube. By contrast, earned media tends to refer to marketing based around PR and influence. Rather than simply paying to get your message out, earned media focuses on attempting to build customer trust by using existing relationships between influential figures and institutions and the public. It's not just one-way communication either. Those focused on earned media will be hoping to create enough word of mouth buzz that you too begin to share the message organically without them having to spend an additional penny. Finally, there's owned media, which perhaps unsurprisingly is all about media owned by the brand. For this, think about things like a company's social media profiles, websites, apps, things like that. Now, this clearly isn't free either. Owned media requires an investment into content that people actually want to engage with. Now, we might have split these buckets out here, but that's not how marketers really think about things. In fact, the very best marketing campaigns fall dead in the middle, right here. By combining together all of these types of advertising, campaigns are able to truly get into our heads. Because let's be honest, our attention spans aren't getting any longer, are they? Now, advertising and paid media might be more effective than we'd like to admit, but when combined with positive endorsements and the social media hype that follows you around the internet, brands are really able to run all-consuming and attention-grabbing campaigns, such that you end up saying, You couldn't go more than, like, a couple hours without thinking about Barbie because you just see it somewhere. That's Patrick H. Willems, by the way. He's an incredible content creator and, quite frankly, a movie expert. Although, when you're comparing him to someone like me, who's seen maybe a hundred movies, including this junk, it's maybe not a fair comparison. Anyway, as Patrick alluded to, the marketing around the new Barbie movie was all-consuming, using all of the tactics we've outlined thus far to truly make the film unavoidable, even for someone like me, who goes to the cinema like every two years. So how did they do this? I'm actually not sure. Now, movie marketing is a serious business. For films like this, it's not unusual to see budgets creep up to and over a hundred million dollars, with even the less successful summer blockbuster, The Little Mermaid, sinking a hundred and forty million dollars into marketing. We don't officially know how much was spent on Barbie's monumental marketing push, but we can assume that it's at the upper end of this range, with Josh Goldstein, president of marketing at Warner Brothers, not denying The Guardian's assertion that they'd spent between 140 and 150 million in an interview. And as I say, a spend this high wouldn't even be all that surprising, especially given the overwhelming nature of Barbie's marketing push which featured all of the things you'd expect, like talk shows and red carpets, where Margot Robbie notably wore some incredible Barbie-related looks, as well as magazine covers and trailers. However, the thing that set Barbie apart, like all of the best influencers, was that this Barbie was really interested in the brand deals. 
Now, you've likely seen some of these Barbie brand deals already, but I really do have to run you through this quite incredible list of pink products. It starts with some fairly standard brand deals, like the clothing tie-ins with Gap, Primark and Forever 21. But before you step out of your house in those clothes, don't forget to slip on your Barbie Crocs. Plus, if you're feeling fancy, then you could add to your look with a wide array of Barbie accessories from Claire's, as well as makeup from NYX. And don't forget to brush your teeth with Barbie toothpaste from Moon. It's not just you that can get ready for going out either. With Barbie dog clothes from Canada Pooch, everyone can get ready together. And before you do leave the house and jump into your Barbie brand Maserati, make sure to blow out your Barbie Dreamhouse candle from Homesick and turn off your Barbie branded Xbox, featuring a Barbie console enclosure thing and a custom Barbie car in Forza. Okay, clothes on, dog dressed, teeth cleaned and stuff turned off. You're ready to head out in your Barbie branded skates from Impala. In fact, the very same ones from the movie that went viral after they were leaked from the film set and then were also worn at the Barbie float at New York Pride. I literally go nowhere without them. With those on, you can skate down to Burger King where you can grab their Barbie meal, featuring this very ominous looking pink sauce, which Heinz has also tweeted that they might be releasing in the future. But if that suspect pink burger leaves you hungry, then there's a bunch of dessert options too. From the Krispy Kreme Barbie Donut collab, to the Pinkberry Barbie Froyo, or the Cold Stone Barbie Ice Cream. Once you've eaten, make sure to grab your Barbie luggage from Buy's Travel and head down to the legitimate Barbie dream house, which is listed on Airbnb for your full Barbie fix. Now, that house is sure to feature rugs from the Barbie Ruggable collaboration, as well as Dragon Glassware's Barbie collection. And of course, there's a pool there, which may well have Barbie floats from Fun Boy strewn around it. You get the point. With over 100 brand deals, no matter what products you want, there's probably a pink Barbie version of it somewhere. With even Google launching Barbie-specific pages and progressive insurance getting in on the action with Barbie tie-in adverts. Mattel even did some internal brand collaborations too, with Uno, Hot Wheels and other Mattel brands taking on a Barbie makeover. In fact, these never-ending brand deals became such a phenomenon that memes emerged parodying the endless string of brand deals. The thing is that this could very easily backfire. People can very quickly become sick of these kinds of movie tie-ins and brand deals. But for a film like Barbie, it almost makes perfect sense. Media expert Jared Weiss put it well, saying that Barbie is overkill. She's meant to be over the top. And I think that Greta Gerwig and Mattel are playing into that. That's kind of the point then, right? Barbie is meant to be a surreal, perfect capitalist fantasy. As the same piece put it, she's a doll living in a perfect world who jumps from career to career with no barriers in her way and a million friends by her side. A doll whose feet literally never quite touch the ground. So with each piece of Barbie promo, we're asked to imagine what if this were all real and possible? This would be Catastrophic! Remember at the beginning of the video, we talked about the different types of marketing. Well, we've seen Barbie lean into owned media by sharing trailers, clips, and promotional material. We've clearly seen a ton of brand deals and paid media. But the real success of this campaign was how all of this flowed into earned media. That's because the Barbie phenomenon became a social media event. People weren't just occasionally buying fun Barbie branded stuff. They're clamoring for Barbie merch, keen to show that they too are in on the joke and part of the fun. Just look at all the people who wore pink when going to the cinema. People wanted to buy the sometimes kitsch and stupid Barbie branded stuff to lean into the meme and take part in a pretty rare monocultural moment. And it wasn't just individuals on social media who wanted to follow the Barbie trend either. Big brands also leaned in, providing the movie with yet more earned media. From Architectural Digest tour of the Barbie Dreamhouse with Margot Robbie, to the New York Times history of Barbie Dreamhouses. 
Of course, many other media outlets jumped on this trend too, hoping to capture that Barbie hype and help drive engagement and clicks towards their own content. I mean, we're making this video too. So all of these groups drove yet more hype towards the film and created a self-proliferating cycle of ticket sales, social media excitement, and croc purchases. Now, Barbie certainly isn't the first movie to lean into this brand deal-centric hype cycle, with Mario also leaning into a similar strategy earlier this year for the promotion of the Super Mario Bros. movie, which saw the release of a mushroom-heavy Mario meal at Shake Shack and Mario tie-in bath bombs at Lush, among many other examples. And this practice goes back even further, with it actually being a pretty popular technique in the 90s. I mean, who can forget the sought-after McDonald's Szechuan sauce released to promote Mulan? I want that Mulan McNugget sauce, Morty! With Barbie's box office revenue now reaching $1 billion, it'll be interesting to see if other movies begin to jump on this trend, delivering Saw 10 Happy Meal toys, a brand new Paw Patrol X Victoria's Secret collection, or a Killers of the Flower Moon video game only available on GameCube. But seriously, Barbie may well have been the ideal movie to use this strategy for. Those are clearly absurd examples, but few other movies will be granted the same leeway by the public as the pink capitalist doll when it comes to these kinds of brand deals. This strategy ultimately worked because it not only tapped into the cultural sentiment about the brand, but also fits the archetype of Barbie. Now, while other studios might struggle to replicate it for their films, Mattel may well try a similar strategy for their future cinematic releases, which are set to include an action heist Uno movie, an emotional and gritty Hot Wheels film, as well as movies for Big Jim, Boglins, and even Chatty Cathy and Betsy Wetsy. I'm serious, there are supposedly 17 movies in consideration for the Mattel Cinematic Universe, something we actually discussed at length with Patrick. There, isn't, there aren't really stories there, they're just toys. People love throwing around the term Cinematic Universe because it's kind of like a buzzword nowadays, basically because... Mm -hmm. Marvel just made it very successful, but I don't think there's actually going to be any universe happening here. I think all that's going to happen is that Mattel wants to replicate Barbie's success. So they're going to try to make a lot more movies based on the toys they own. But those various movies, I think will pretty much be separate standalone things. If you want to watch that full separate video where we go in depth about the MCU, not that one, then you can check it out over on Nebula. That's the streaming service that we built with a bunch of other creators and where we upload exclusive videos like this one and the TLDR daily discussions where our team talk about important topics from the endless coups in the Sahel region, the Twitter rebrand, or the specifics of the war in Ukraine. Now, the TLDR writing team hosts these daily discussions most days, diving deeper into the news stories we write about and unpacking the hidden details that they found fascinating, but were either too long or too academic to make it into the final scripts. If you want to check the series out, then you can find the episodes exclusively on Nebula. The best news is that Nebula is less than £2 a month and provides you with ad-free and exclusive videos from TLDR and a whole ton of other incredible content creators like Johnny Harris, Real Life Law and Legal Eagle. Check it out by clicking the link in the description and make sure you use our link so that they know you came from us.